All right, you guys, today we are going to make reptiles and amphibians is what we're calling this project because it's kind of open-ended for you all to decide what animal you want to make. We have some examples where we made an alligator here. We had a salamander that we made right here. We have another little alligator that we have right here. So it just kind of gives you guys some ideas of different forms that you guys can make with this to make it your own. So in your box today, you are the tools that you're needed for this project will be a fork, a paintbrush, your slip, a sponge, your cutting tool, a toilet paper roll. So if you guys use this size, because this size is gonna be best, if you happen to have only paper towel rolls at your house, cut it down to the size of about a toilet paper roll because this is the size that's going to work best and what your slabs cut to. Your clay and that's what we'll need. So the first thing that I'm going to have you do is in your box you're going to find a octagon. It's going to have a B labeled on the bottom of it and that's where you know that B goes towards you because that's the bottom of your clay slab. So make sure that bottom of the clay slab is lined up right with your belly button I think is a good way. First thing I'm going to have you guys do is you're going to go ahead and score your clay. So remember, whenever we put two pieces of clay together, we always score, which is roughing up the surface area, and slip, which we have here, which is kind of like our glue, to make sure everything stays nice and attached. So you're going to take where the B is on the bottom, and using your fork, you're gently going to just rough up that surface area. Remember, don't go too deep. You just want to get that top little layer. Then we're going to go on the side here. We're going to skip this side. We'll come up to the top here. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. I'm going to have you guys just lift it up and we'll score on that underneath side and you'll see why in a second. And you're going to come here and you're going to score. We're going to slip, skip our side and we're going to score again. And we're ending up right there. Now you're going to take your slip and generously paint a pretty good amount onto our edges here. So just on that bottom edge is where we're going to start with. Take your toilet paper roll and give out in the center of your octagon we're going to place it. So we want it central all the way around right in the center there. We're going to fold this top lip up towards us so it exposes that little area that we scored. I'm going to use my slip, and again, I'm going to paint a generous amount on here. Now I'm going to take my B right here, this bottom part, and I'm going to move towards it, and I'm going to overlap and attach these two pieces together. Just using my index finger underneath, and it's got to be inserted into the toilet paper roll, my thumb on the top, just gently pressing on here, you can kind of see that slip oozing out. That means that we have a nice, strong attachment. Same thing on the left side and the right side. So we're just using our thumbs on the left, thumbs on the right, supporting underneath, and we're just pressing that on there to make sure we get a nice attachment. You guys can take the time and kind of smooth out this seam right here too, or you can leave it because it's on the underside of the belly. I think it's your choice. Now, we're gonna take our slip and where we had scored earlier, we're going to go ahead and apply a generous amount on those sides. I'm going to pinch this together, kind of making it taco is what we're going to think of. We're going to start at the top here and with my thumb and my index finger, I'm just going to come and I'm just going to pinch, pinch, pinch right on down. You can insert your fingers right into here and just kind of support that side as you're pinching these over. And again, you want to see that clay get nice, that uh, slip kind of ooze out to get a nice strong attachment. Now you guys, this is what's going to be our tail and our head of our alligator. So we're going to want to make sure that we kind of smooth this out and overlap this and fold this little seam over. And I'm just using my thumb or my finger here on the inside just to kind of support that wall. I'm going to keep moving down keep moving down, supporting that clay, and I get all the way down to the bottom, all the way down to the bottom, and I get to the point where I can't really put my finger in there anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna gently pinch that part together. And 
and we're going to end up right there, that nice kind of triangular shape. I'm going to flip to the other side, and again, I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to slip both edges. I'm going to place my left hand into here, just using my middle finger or my index finger, and I'm going to start at the top here, and I'm just pressing these sides together. You should see that slip kind of ooze out. So I'm just pressing it together, just supporting that wall. I can stop here, just kind of fold that seam over, kind of smoothing it in so you don't see it as much. Pushing down, pushing down, I'm just going to smooth that over. I get all the way to the end and my finger can't fit in there anymore, so again, I'm just going to push that out. When you get done, you're going to end up, there's that taco for we were talking about. You can gently kind of tap this on the table, just on the belly side down where that seam was where you uh, had attached it earlier by gently just tapping it real gently, you guys. That'll help it sit up and also strengthen that attachment. Now I'm just going to ask you guys to set this outside or set it aside, one of the two. If it's sunny outside, go ahead and set this outside for about 10 to 15 minutes or so. Um, or if you're working inside and let's say if it's rainy outside or anything like that just set it aside for about a half hour or so because what you want it to do is you want it to stiffen up you can see that this clay is a little wet so it's making it a little floppy for me so if i let it set up a little bit which means letting it harden so it's going to be able a little bit easier when i attach all my pieces on here so i'll set this to the side or if it's sunny we'll put it outside and we'll start working on our next pieces so while we're waiting that, for that to set up, I'm going to have you guys start working on your, at, your additions to your reptile or your amphibian. So we alligators or crocodiles are in the reptile family. You can do lizards, which are again in the reptile family, or we added amphibians because I know some of you guys are salamander fans, and that's in the amphibian family, so we kind of wanted to add into those two. For sure you guys are going to need six little balls of clay because you're going to have two eyes and four feet. So with your extra clay, you should have found a little ball of extra clay in there. You're just going to take and tear off a little bit of clay and using your fingers and through the palms of your hand, you're just going to roll that clay into a ball. So I'm rolling it into the ball. You want it about the size of your thumb. You don't want it much bigger than your thumb because as we know, those solid pieces of clay have the potential to blow out in the kiln, so we don't want to make them much bigger than that. Otherwise, we're going to have to hollow them out. So about the size of your thumb, and then we're going to place it to the side. So we're going to need six of those. So I'm just moving that clay, and I tore some off, and I rolled it in between my hands, in between my palms, setting it to the side. Now let's say I got one that was too big, and it's larger than the size of my thumb. Instead of starting over, I can just pinch a little bit of that clay off to size it down. And by rolling it between my hands, I'm able to compress it back again and get the right size. Same with, let's say if our, we think our little ball, our balls of clay are too little, let's say we're way down here in the pea size. That's a little bit too little for me, so I'm going to add just onto it and really compressing between the palms of my hand. I can come here and get to the right size. You should have a small extra slab of clay that came in your box also, and that's what we're going to cut our scales with if you choose to do an alligator, or you guys can use however you want for your decorations onto this. I'm just going to show you how we did our alligator scales. So I'm using these triangles. Now we're there, and I can take these away and set these off to the side. Now, check this out. Like making those cuts, I have scales that are already ready to go right here. You guys take the time here just to kind of smooth these edges out too, to get rid of some of these cut marks. So you're just kind of smoothing these out. You can kind of sculpt them on there. Just smooth those edges out. 
All right, when you finish grabbing all of, or making all of your additions for your, for your animal, you're gonna come back over, and once this is set up, you're gonna take your four back over, and you're gonna realize once it's been outside or sat out, sat out for about a half hour, you'll notice that it feels a little stiffer. Here's one from earlier that we just did, and see how easily I can bend this? Now this one, it's not really moving. It's still soft, but it feels a little bit firmer to the touch, which in turn makes it a little bit easier for me to work with. So I can take this and we can see, I can still see my seam right here. So I can just kind of take my finger and just work. You guys don't introduce water to this. It's just gonna take a little bit of patience just to kind of smooth that out with my finger as we're coming through. Same thing on that back, I'm just smoothing that out. I can squeeze this out if I want. If I want kind of a longer tail, I'll decide where I want my head and where I want my tail. And I'm thinking this side can, has a little bit more play so I can kind of squeeze this out a little bit. If I want a little bit extra for my tail, just that little tip. This would be if you wanted more of a rounded nose, say if you wanted a salamander, this would be the point where you would kind of push this in and sculpt that. But I'm gonna stick with an alligator. So I'm gonna keep it pretty pointy on my snout there. And again, make sure that this um, seam underneath is nice and smooth and just kind of tap it on the table again. All right, now we'll start adding our additions. Now you see on this one here, we did not do any texture. We just left it smooth. Now on this one, we did add texture. So this is the point where you guys decide whether you want to add texture or if you're okay with it just being that smooth body. I will tell you if you guys are adding texture back into it, it's gonna take a little bit of time and patience as you're moving through. So just realize that if you start adding texture that you are making a time commitment to this project. So uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you guys how to add a couple ideas for texture, but I am gonna demo just with a smooth body. So say if you wanted those alligator scales like I have, I used my cutting tool here. I just came here with a side and I just came and just gently kind of moved the clay. I'm not really pushing in because pushing in could give me a hole in my alligator. All I want to do is just kind of move the clay, pushing it back to the sides. And by overlapping these areas, it gives me the illusion that I have scales. I only went down to about here because you're not gonna see that underside. And usually, alligators and crocodiles have an underside of their belly that's kind of smooth and underneath their stout. So I just focused on the top about two thirds of the body. The salamanders, we, same thing, we just kind of added those lines in. So we just came in and just kind of free formed, gave us some ideas for this. You could even just kind of add in circles, you guys can look at images because salamanders have some pretty cool patterns on their body. So you guys could kind of look at images and then kind of decide what you want best for yours. But I'm gonna just demo just a smooth alligator for you today. First thing is I'm gonna put my eyes on. So whenever you put two pieces of clay together, I know you guys are, know this already, but we're gonna score, which is roughing up the surface area and slip. So I'm gonna go back, oh, we'll say about four fingers from the tip of the snout here to put my eyes on. So I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna score with my fork, score with my fork, and it's going right on top of my form here. And I'm gonna slip, and then I'm just going to take my eyes, and I'm just gonna kinda of wiggle them on there. Make sure that you wiggle them on there good to get a nice attachment. I'm gonna wiggle them on there to get a good attachment to my four. Now we're gonna do our feet. One thing that you should notice about these is I did not put the feet directly on the bottom of here because those have a tendency to break off and when you guys are moving them or in the firing. I put them up higher on my body. So if you're looking at the here, it's about at least a finger width from the bottom. It's maybe about halfway up the body and then also it kind of looks like our alligator is a little swimming. So I'm gonna go about halfway up the body and I'm gonna score here, score here. I'll do the exact same on the other side, score and score 
Then I'm going to take my other four little balls of clay and I'll score the backs of them. Using my slip, paint a generous amount on two, both areas. And then I'm going to hold my alligator body and holding my leg, or my little claw in here, I'm just going to wiggle it on there, attaching it onto there. Making sure I really wiggle to get a good attachment. Okay. When we get done, we've got four little claws on there. Now, I'm going to take and make my pupils into my eyes so I can just kind of take here. Or if you guys have the end of the paintbrush, it'd be easier just to kind of run that in there. And we've got a pupil. I'm going to run this in here and give myself a little pupil. Now, for my claws, I'm just going to slice, holding underneath, supporting this foot right here, or this claw, I'm sorry, I'm just going to slice that together. And then I can just spread my little toes out and just gently kind of pull them apart. And that's going to give me my little claws. Again, I'm coming here and I'm supporting underneath. I'm just making two little slices all the way through the feet, pulling them back. That'll get there. Now, you guys, these are just suggestions. You guys, if you guys want to do a different way of making your claw, that is fine also. Just make sure that it's about halfway up the body so it's not touching the bottoms of, or to the table, it's not touching the table and the weight's not supported on it. Coming there. We're starting to look more like a little alligator. Now we're going to go ahead and add our scales. So we're going to score all the way down and I'm just going to do a single line of scales onto this one. But you guys could do this one decided to do doubles, and then going down the tail, and here's the one that decided to do the singles. So you guys kind of decide which way you'd like to go with that. And again, you're scoring and slipping. Whenever you're adding two pieces of clay together, you always slip and score. So I'm scoring and slipping, making sure I get a good attachment to everything. Come here, and I'm just going to press that on. It's a pretty big one, actually, so I'm going to cut them down just a little bit because I don't want to give them too big of a scale, that first one. Now I'm going to move here, moving back, score and slip and pressing on. Now this one, when I get to the end, I realize that I kind of ran out of scales and I need some smaller ones for my tail so I can come in here and I'm going to cut these down just so I can make a couple little smaller ones on my tail so it looks like it's getting smaller as we're moving back. Pressing on in here, just scoring and slipping each time. And, and, oh, our alligator's coming into shape. Now this is the time where you guys can kind of add your own touches to it. So if you want to add some things onto the scales, you sure can. Some texture onto them. The two things I'm going to for sure ask you to add is, you need two holes for your nostril. So right up front, you'll come here. Just kind of need two nostril holes. We also need to add his mouth here. So coming here, I'm just going to add a little squiggly line to break this up with my cutting tool. Or if it's easier for you guys, because sometimes that cutting tool is a little bit hard to move with, grab a pencil and you can just 
come and squiggle back there. Once you've finished with your alligator, we're gonna flip them over and gently, making sure you're gentle here, you're gonna take and place your initials on the bottom or your full name. So I'm gonna take my name and I'm gonna write it on the bottom. Then I'm gonna ask you, either with a pencil or the paintbrush that's in here, we're gonna to have to put a hole in this alligator because since he is hollow, we have to have an, where, some place for the air to escape when he's firing. So we have to put a hole in here. So somewhere on the bottom, you're just gonna stick your pencil all the way in. Add a little hole that allows the air to escape so it will not blow up in the kiln. And when you get done, you guys are just gonna place him on your board that was provided. Again, make sure your name's on it legibly. And I'm gonna have you guys cover it up with your plastic bag. Just gently kind of cover it up and tuck it around the sides and set it to the side. We want these to dry kind of slowly since we added so many attachments today. So we wanna make sure that our plastic bag is covered around this and this is the way that it's gonna come back to the studio. Make sure you're careful in transport so it's not so wiggly. So tell whoever's bringing it back to the studio just to be careful when they're moving with your alligator or your reptile or amphibian. That's it, enjoy.